This video clip will talk about sustainable development in the context of urbanization, the stresses put on uh, farming, land use, globalization, and those types of things in the context of uh, the Canadian experience. In the opening uh, image you see a picture, uh, sort of an aerial photograph of some very densely packed houses. I actually took this picture in uh, Mississauga near the uh, Highway 10 and uh, 401, typical of the uh, Greater Toronto Area. And the question I want to uh, deal with is how do you uh, go from a flat farmer's field to this type of situation and what are the stresses and forces that are creating these type of circumstances? This is a perfect example of the uh, sustainable environment. What you're looking at is earth, which has been gathered up by some farmer which has sold his land and then put that in a big pile so that can be sold for developers for sod when the subsequent houses are built on the land there's no sense in putting the houses on good quality earth so they put the houses on land after the topsoil has been taken off here's another example of a big huge field and you can see it goes right across to the road and then there's no hedgerows the field goes directly to the road. Now why is the snow brown over on this side? Because the topsoil has been blown off. Why are there no hedgerows? <coughs> what I mean by hedgerows is at the edge of the field there will be a fence and there will be trees and shrubs growing along there and in those trees there will be birds nests, there will be small animals, there will be insects, the natural things that take care of the uh, pests on the farmers uh, property so instead of having to buy insecticide and pesticide and those kinds of uh, things which are artificially uh, contaminating the soil the just natural life cycle of the rhythm of the farm will take care of these things but since the globalized farming community is making it such that the farmers have to maximize yield on the acreage of their land they're making their fences disappear so that the fields could be cultivated right to the very edge of the road so they could get the maximum amount of acreage on the property that they own. Of course the consequence of that is you eliminate uh, the natural hedgerows that used to be in the smaller farms which served as a biodiversity which helped to reduce the requirements for insecticide, pesticides and herbicides. Of course when you have big huge wide open fields of 100, 150, 200 acres uh, what that means in the winter time, of course, is the wind will blow fast across the uh, flatness of the ground and then build up uh, snow banks in the ditches, which is not what you want. I mean, the farmer wants the snow to stay on the field. Why? Because in the spring the snow melts and then that water is used to provide uh, what's necessary, the wetness, so the plants will grow. So what farm some farmers are doing to try to combat this is putting snow fences in the middle of their fields. So this is a picture of one farmer's field uh, just a bit northeast of Mount Albert. Mount Albert is a small community northeast of Newmarket. And you can see the snow fence running down the middle of the field which is meant uh, by the wooden slats in the fence to block the snow coming quickly across because it's such a big huge field and then make a little bit of a drift so that in the spring there'd be more snow to melt in the field. So here's a little, nice little site, a uh, former farmer's field surrounded by nice trees which has been leveled perfectly flat by the bulldozers. These, these nice little McMansions have been put in here. Topsoil has been sold. The people who bought the houses in order to have any uh, soil in which to have their trees grow had to then go to the garden centers and buy back the topsoil at a marked up price of course. And as you can see this is a nice little community of all kinds of little two hundred and three hundred thousand dollar homes. Uh, but there's no corn growing here, no wheat, no canola, no uh, peas, potatoes, or anything like that. So there's no real conclusion to this little uh, clip. I mean, there's nothing I can say. I mean, you, you can't stop the uh, progress that we're seeing here in the urbanization of North America and Europe, but we can't go back in time and all live in small villages and have, you know, uh, gardens that we tend and uh, walk to work. That'd be ridiculous. Just as much as we couldn't reduce world population by 70% without some uh, you know, disastrous circumstance that would get rid of all our loved ones and family. That's that's just silly. But I did want students 
to have some thinking about how we get to here from there, meaning uh, the circumstances that we live in our modern urban society does come at a cost, and there are some circumstances related to uh, how we get there, and I wanted them to also understand that the pressures of globalization and the competitiveness, and as it relates to, say, the farming circumstances, as an example, I mean, they also have the automotive sector and the banking sector, but I just wanted to use this, this little clip, an example from the farming sector and the loss of land use. So you can have some ideas of the component parts uh, to sustainable development, globalization, urbanization, the loss of farmland. Thank you.